Lesson 3, Views A view is a named virtual table that is defined by a query and used as a table. Unlike permanent tables, a view has no physical representation of its data unless you create an index on it. Whenever you issue a query against a non-indexed view, SQL Server in practice has to access the underlying tables. When you create a view, you specify a name for the view and a query. Microsoft SQL Server stores only metadata information about the view, describing the object, its columns, security, dependencies, and so on. When you query a view, by retrieving or modifying data, the query processor replaces a view reference with its definition, in other words, the query processor expands the view definition and generates an execution plan accessing the underlying objects. Part 1, Creating a View The following example checks for the existence of a specified view by verifying that the view is an object ID. If the view exists, it is deleted. If the view does not exist, the drop view statement is not executed. A view can be created only in the current database. The create view must be the first statement in a query batch. A view can have a maximum of 1024 columns. When querying through a view, the database engine checks to make sure that all the database objects referenced anywhere in the statement exist and that they are valid in the context of the statement, and that data modification statements do not violate any data integrity rules. A check that fails returns an error message. A successful check translates the action into an action against the underlying table or tables. Part 2, Order by in a view. Try running the following code, which attempts to introduce an order by clause. The attempt fails, generating the following error. Notice that the error doesn't say that order by is disallowed altogether, rather, it indicates a couple of exceptions where it is allowed, when top or for XML is also specified. Part 3, Refreshing Views When you create a view, SQL Server stores metadata information describing the view, its columns, security, dependencies, and so on. Schema changes in underlying objects are not reflected in the view's metadata information. After applying such schema changes, 
it's a good practice to refresh the view's metadata information using the SP Refresh View Stored procedure so that the changes are reflected in the view. To demonstrate what can happen when you make schema changes and don't refresh the view's metadata information, first run the following code which creates the table T1 and the view V1 in the temp database for demonstration purposes. Run the following code to query the view. You get the following output with both columns. Next, add a column to T1. If you execute the select query again, you still get only two columns in the output. To refresh the view's metadata information, run the SP Refresh View Stored procedure against V1. Execute the select query again, and you get the following output, which includes the new column, call 3. Part 4, Encryption and Schema Binding SP Help Text displays the definition that is used to create an object in multiple rows. If you specify the encryption option, the object's text will be converted to an obfuscated format. But don't rely on this option as an encryption mechanism to protect your intellectual property. If you create a view with the schema binding option, SQL Server rejects attempts to drop underlying objects or make any schema modification to referenced columns, Schema binding option has two syntactical requirements in terms of the query defining the view. You must use two part names for all objects, for example, bow cars, not just cars, and the use of asterisk is not allowed in the select list. Instead, all column names must be specified explicitly. Try to get the text of the view. Try to alter one of the referenced columns. You get the following error. Part 5, Check Option. Specifying with check option when creating a view prevents insert and update statements that conflict with the view's query filter. Without this option, a view normally accepts modifications that do not meet the query's filter.
for example, the vCities view accepts the following insert. The new city was added to the cities table, but obviously when you query the view, you don't see the new city. Next, run the code to add with check option to the view's definition. Now try to insert a row that conflicts with the filter. You get the error. Part 6, Indexed Views. Remember that without an index, a view does not have any physical representation of its data, rather, it just has metadata information pointing to the underlying objects. However, SQL Server will physically materialize a view's data if you create a unique clustered index on the view. SQL Server keeps the indexed view in sync with modifications against the underlying tables. You cannot request to synchronize the view's contents on demand or on scheduled basis. An indexed view is very much like a table index in terms of data integrity. Indexed views can give you great performance benefits for queries that retrieve data. Indexed views can substantially reduce the amount of I.O. required to return data and the processing time required for expensive calculations. Substantial performance gains can be achieved, for example, for date and aggregation queries or expensive joins. However, keep in mind that modifications to an indexed view's underlying tables require changes to the indexed, and therefore materialized, view, degrading the performance of your modifications. The view must be created with the schema binding option. If the view's query aggregates data, its select list must include the count underscore big aggregate function. Count underscore big is the same as count, except that its result type is begint. Display estimated execution plan. Create clustered index. Display estimated execution plan again. The plan shows that the view's clustered index was scanned. Do you want to learn new skills in the fastest and most effective way? Visit Learn with Video Tutorials.com